in this uh, experiment, <coughs> Michael Faraday used uh, a battery, a DC battery, a switch, an iron ring, you know, iron is a ferromagnetic material, and there are two coils. One coil is bound on this ring on the left hand, other coil is bound on the right side of the coil, and this on the right side coil is attached to a galvanometer. You know, galvanometer is used to understand if there's an induced EMF on the coil, if there's an induced EMF, it deflects in one direction. This is center zero galvanometer. Also, center zero galvanometers are used to know the direction of the electric current. If the electric current direction is positive, the galvanometer deflects to the right. If electric current direction is negative, it deflects to the left. So you can understand that if there's a change in direction of the induced current as well. So now uh, the, the coil which is attached to the battery is named as primary coil. The coil attached to the galvanometer is named as secondary coil. And we are going to switch on and off this circuit. Initially, the switch is open, as you see. A battery is not providing an electric current. If no electric current is provided to the coil, primary coil, so magnetic field of the coil will be zero. If magnetic field of the coil is zero, uh, there will be no change in no magnetic flux. And if no magnetic flux is produced, there will be no change in magnetic flux on the secondary coil. That's why secondary coil will measure zero. But when the switch of the primary circuit is closed, when we make it closed, as soon as we close the switch, then electric current will be provided, correct? Yes. So if an electric current passes through the coil, coil, then we will produce a magnetic field. This coil will produce a magnetic field. Yeah, in mag uh, when the primary, the switch of the primary circuit is closed, magnetic field is produced by this coil, and this magnetic field lines will circulate on this iron. Iron is a ferromagnetic material, which I create a moon. That's why magnetic field lines follow this iron. Initially, it was zero, no magnetic field, no magnetic flux. But then you switch it on, first coil produces a magnetic field. These lines of the magnetic field passes through, through the second secondary coil. As they pass through the secondary coil, magnetic flux, there will be a magnetic flux. So there will be an increase in the magnetic flux from zero to a number. If magnetic flux through the secondary coil increases from zero to a number, so rule says that for that as well, if there's a change in magnetic flux through a coil, there will be an induced yeah, EMF, there will be an induced current. And second coil will induce a current, and you are going to observe that this galvanometer, galvanometer deflects in one direction. So magnetic flux through the secondary coil G increases, a current is induced in the secondary coil, galvanometer deflects in one direction. Teacher, magnetic flux will be produced or increased? Produced and also increased. Initially, sure. initially, current is zero. Okay. No current, no magnetic field. In the primary coil, it will be produced, yes. but in the secondary coil, it must be increased. A change in magnetic flux, yes. Yeah, in the primary coil, yes, you are right, there is a magnetic field increasing. Of course, this magnetic field passes through the secondary coil. As it passes through the secondary coil, it causes a magnetic flux as well. So initial magnetic flux is zero because no magnetic field. But finally, there is a magnetic field due to the first coil, the primary coil. So this magnetic flux on the secondary coil increases from zero to a number. This increase in magnetic flux causes an induced current in the secondary coil. And we are going to observe that galvanometer deflects in one direction. Okay. Hold on, the secondary coil will produce magnetic flux and induce it. Yes, because of the magnetic field of the first coil, primary coil, we will produce a magnetic flux through the secondary coil. And also induced EMF. Yes, of course. Induced EMF is on the secondary coil. But the induced EMF is just for some second one. Yes, just for some, se some seconds. Well, as soon as you switch it on, you are going to observe that. Because as soon as you switch it on, electric current increases from zero to maximum. Magnetic field increases from zero to a maximum. Magnetic flux increases from zero to a maximum. So, as this change in the magnetic flux, during this change in magnetic flux, we will observe a current in the coil and galvanometer deflects. But later, if you keep 
the switch closed. Now second one. We switch it on, we observe that. As switch of the primary circuit is kept closed. Kept closed, what does it mean? Electric current is constant. Yes. If electric current is constant, magnetic field of the primary current is constant. If magnetic field of the primary coil is constant, magnetic flux through the secondary coil is also constant. A constant magnetic flux? Is there any use No. No. Yeah, and if you keep the switch closed, because there is no change in magnetic flux in the secondary coil, yes. secondary coil will not induce a EMF, will not induce a current, you are going to observe zero in the galvanometer. So, let's read it. As switch of the primary circuit is kept closed, no change in the magnetic flux through the secondary coil, no current is induced in the coil, so galvanometer reads zero. What if we open the switch? Uh, when switch of the primary circuit is opened, this time the electric current will decrease. Magnetic field of the primary coil will decrease. Magnetic flux through the secondary coil will decrease. Is there a change in magnetic flux? Yes. Yes. Decreases. It's a decrease, but there's a change, but decrease. Ha! Huh. Of course there will be some induced current on the secondary coil in this case. However, in the first step, it was an increase. Magnetic flux was increasing. It said that it deflects to the right. But in the third step, magnetic flux decreased. In this case, we expect galvanometer to deflect to the left. Yeah. If increase cause a deflection to the right, decrease must cause a deflection to the left. So we say that a current is induced in the coil, the galvanometer deflects in the opposite direction. Teacher, for mutual abductions, uh, the whole idea is experimenting how the galvanometer will react if the switch is open. No, how, how can you transfer current? Electrical energy from one coil to another coil without connecting them. By By using the change of magnetic flux. This is the basic of transformers we are going to study in section 3 of chapter, chapter 6. Next section. Base of the transformers. Yeah, you can transfer electrical energy without con connection by using the change of magnetic flux. Now I will do this experiment. So I'm going to use iron because you know iron is a big magnetic permeability. So there is no direct connection between them. Just I am going to insert iron to provide greater mu for both of them. And I'm going to attach the end of the coil to battery. One end of the coil is the one end of the battery I'm going to attach. And other end I will attach to... Okay, now. I will hold it to make you see much better. So coils are not in uh, electrical connection only. Iron provides a big magnetic flux change. Now observe it. When I close it, as soon as I close, galvanometer will deflect in one direction. Where is see the it? iron? Iron is I insert inside. Okay. So now I keep closed, but initially, as soon as I close it, it will deflect in one direction. It deflects to the left. But now I'll keep close. It's it's there, you see why? Because I don't make a change in the current. I don't make a change in magnetic field. No change in magnetic field, not zero. But when I open it, what you expect? It will deflect opposite, opposite direction and to the right. Yes. Close it to the left. Keep closed, zero. Open it to the right. Close it to the left. Keep closed. Zero. Open it <laughs> to the right. <laughs> magnetic flux through the secondary coil changes and induces an EMF in that coil as the current in the primary coil changes by time. Yeah. We are making a change in the primary, electric current in the primary coil, but we make a change in magnetic flux in the secondary coil and we got EMF from secondary coil. That's why equation for self neutral inductance is very similar to the equation of the self inductance. Inductance. Only difference is instead of L, we are going to insert that. This is only difference. So this E absolutely induces EMF in the secondary coil. Delta I electric current change in primary coil. And what is M called? M is called mutual inductance. It's a constant number. Mutual inductance of this combination. Yeah, the mutual inductance of two coil system. Ah. 
This unit is constant. It's mutual inductance. It's unit is again Henry. Again Henry. Yeah. Just like capital M, which is your coefficient of self induction. This is also Henry. Huh. This mutual inductance it depends. depends on three things. Right. One of them is specifications of the coil. Yeah, the length of the coil, cross-section area, number of turns, medium which you are using in here, all are depend determining the coefficient of uh, mutual inductance. Mm -hmm. Yeah, when I say specification of the two coil system, I'm called talking about both coils, not only single coil. Length of both coil, cross-section area of the both coil, number of turns of the both coil, and how far, how close they are also affects that. And what medium you are using? Are you using a air or right now are you inserting the iron? So the specification means that. One more thing also affects the mutual inductance, which is orientation of two coils with respect to one another. Now both coils faces each other, their plays are parallel to each other. You see that? Plane of this first coil and then are parallel. When the planes are parallel, when mutual inductance is maximum, when the coils are parallel to each other. Now, this case. This case, I kept the coils parallel to each other. Yes, right now, I keep them parallel, so mutual inductance is maximum. Maximum in GCM you can observe it here. Let's try We need it, but we can. Let's do it. But, Mutual inductance is minimum when the coils are perpendicular. Now I will make one coil perpendicular to the other one. Are they perpendicular now? Yes. So now mutual inductance will be minimum. Which is still exists but not as big as parallel. Perpendicular minimum. Now let's do it parallel. When they are parallel to each other. In you see my much greater than so yeah if you keep coils parallel to each other mutual inductance is my maximum but if you keep coils perpendicular to each other in this case mutual inductance is minimum this is a exam question at what orientation of the coils mutual inductance is maximum when the coils are parallel at what orientation of the coils mutual inductance is minimum when the coils are parallel 